My Favorite Husband. Starring Barry Nelson and Vanessa Brown. Come on, Liz, we're a half hour late already. Darling, which hat do you like best? This one? <laughs> or uh, that one? Oh, I like that one. Yeah, me too. Well, now where are you going? Well, there's a change. This outfit doesn't go with the hat. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, what am I bid for this splendid example of the Cherokee tribe? This is really an heirloom. It is priceless. A collector's item, I think I might say. In fact, I've never seen such a wonderful wooden Indian. How would you like to see it in your living room? In your rumpus room? On the front of your lawn? In front of your cigar store? What am I bid? Thirty dollars. May I hear thirty dollars, please? Th thirty dollars. Thirty-one dollars. Thirty-two! <laughs> Thirty-three dollars. Thirty... Thirty-three dollars once? Thirty-three dollars twice? For the third and last time, so Next item, quick. Yes, sir. That was a close call. We <gasps> almost got it. Imagine. A wooden Indian in my Chinese modern living room. George would have scalped me. <laughs> Isn't this exciting? Hurry up, I've got them hot. I broke the China darning egg. What am I going to do? Stick in those two lamps, the ones we were going to throw out. The ones that the mission rejected, you know. But how can you explain that? Just go get them. Maybe we ought to go before we buy something. Look. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here we have a very fine pair of frunifrans. These are made definitely of Louvre-Bred demi-grain, and they are from the King Louis XIV period, of course. <laughs> what may I say, please, for this fine pair of derrickins? Shall I say ten dollars each? Will you bid ten dollars each, please? Ten dollars each. Ten dollars each. Ten dollars. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. So. <laughs> Now I know what a piano mover goes through. Oh, do you realize these lamp bases are over 200 years old? Liz, you are a brave woman, considering what George said after the last auction you attended. Oh, who's George? <laughs> oh, I'd say beautiful. Well, priceless. What do you intend doing with them after you glue the pieces together? <laughs> I might put them on the end table that I bought at the last auction. Oh, in the den? No. In the attic. Liz, aren't you a little afraid to tell George? I am not afraid to tell George anything. Come to think of it, I'll put them right smack in the living room. That's my girl. I'll go in the attic. <laughs> George? Woohoo, darling. George? Okay, the ghost is clean. <laughs> oh, thank heavens George isn't home yet. Oh. Oh. Maria, dear. Better I should be a horse. <laughs> and the closet. Hand me the other one. I wish I could afford a pair of antique lamps for my guest closet. <laughs> and pray for a dry spell. Oh, Myra, you underestimate me. I'm going to fix George's favorite goodies for dinner tonight. He'll stuff himself like a turkey. And when he's contented, sleepy, and bloated, I'll simply, hello, dear, go on. <laughs> Liz. I now pronounce you man and wife. No, 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 stay for dinner. No, thanks, dear. I like my fights on TV. As you were saying, after George gets contented, sleepy, and bloated, continue. <laughs> well, you're not bloated yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well? Look better wearing my raincoat. <laughs> I think they're exquisite. Antique shop? No. Rummage sale? No. Box of Cracker Jack? <laughs> Auction, yes. The thought of 
Thorndale Mansion. They're auctioning off all the furnishings. You see, they're tearing down the house to put up an office building. With our money, huh? How much? Twenty-five dollars. But the man said they belonged to Louis XIV. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Is that so? They use AC or DC in those days. <laughs> they used to be vases. The finest English china. Going to do over the whole house to match the uh, vases? They are pretty. All right, they're pretty. Now, Liz, you promised me. Sorry, I lost my head. Got a whole attic full of stuff you bought because you thought it was pretty. Now, what are we going to do with it? Maybe we could have an auction. Liz, I want you to take this stuff back to the auctioneer tomorrow. Oh, no, George. All sales are final. All right, I'll take them back. You're mad at me. No, no, I, I'm not mad at you. It's just that... You're not mad at me, prove it. How's that? Still mad at me. See? I'm not mad. But I'm taking the lamps back tomorrow. <laughs> nice try. Not fair. I'm just getting started. I'll, uh, I'll take these monstrosities with me to the bank tomorrow and return them during the lunch hour. Yes, dear. You know, I, I'm just continually amazed how women are talked into buying this worthless trash from high-pressured salesmen. Well, they have to make a living. This one was very persuasive. Persuasive, yeah. Well, a man would never be taken in by their corny come-ons. On my left, ladies and gentlemen, are two genuine imitation lamps formerly owned by Louis XIV. They are easily worth $150 apiece. What am I bid for them? What am I bid for them? Five dollars, five dollars, ten, ten. Do I hear fifteen, fifteen, twenty-five? Going, going, gone, sold to the woman in the yellow sweater. <laughs> Look, I want you to promise me never to go near that auction or that auctioneer again. Girl Scouts on it. Twenty five dollars. Each. Excuse me. It's a good thing Liz didn't see the armor. You'd have an early King Arthur house. Come on, Fred. Let's return this stuff so we can get some lunch and get right back to the bank. Okay, George. Do you think you'll have any trouble getting your money? Do I think I'll have any trouble? Look, Fred, once this auctioneer gets his mitts on your money, the only way of getting it back is to shoot him and open his hand before rigor mortis sets in. I hope you have a silencer on your gun. Oh, I use the old George Cooper technique. Talk fast, stand firm, look tough. And settle for 50 cents on the dollar. Anybody here? Anybody here? Good day. May I help you? My name's Cooper. My wife came in here yesterday and bought these lamps for $50, and I'm returning. Why, certainly. I want you to know in advance I know all about how you operate. I don't give a hoot about your rule against returning merchandise. I want my money back. I want all of it. And if I don't get it, I'm prepared to... <laughs> $50. $50. Plus $2 sales tax. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sales tax. Listen, uh, I mean, you know what I said a second ago. I was... Come here, you give me too much. That's for taxi fare. <laughs> oh, Mr. Uh, Wharton. <laughs> Wharton, I mean. <laughs> uh, please, Mr. Cooper. It's the least I can do for the inconvenience. Well, really, uh, it's very nice of you, but... Uh, I, really... <laughs> Aren't they atrocious? <laughs> Horrible. They're worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, gentlemen, it's amazing what women will buy. What some women will insist on buying. How you take a man. You can never sell him trash like this. Exactly what I was telling my wife. You see, a man has a much finer appreciation for value and quality. Especially the more successful man, like yourself. Now, let me see. I'd say that you were in uh, oil? No, no. Uh, hotels? No, no, no. Uh, President of a steamship line? <clears throat> no, no. Uh, you might say that I deal in money. Money? That's a dandy product. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, he doesn't own any of it. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a banker. A banker? I should have known it's written all over you. 
Mm-hmm. Well, uh, thanks. I, we, we'd better get on our way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Mr. Cooper, before you go, uh, I'd like to show you something exquisite. Oh, well, some other time, Mr. Wharton. You see, it's almost 12.30. I... It's something that I would only consider showing to a man who really appreciates the very finest in great artistry. A man like yourself, Mr. Cooper. Mm, well, I, we could take a minute or two. Sure. Excellent, gentlemen. Right this way. George, I never realized you knew so much about art. Well, I'm not exactly a barbarian, exactly. <laughs> Incidentally, gentlemen, don't bother asking the price as it is not for sale. What you are about to see is not only impossible to replace, but it is undoubtedly one of the very, very finest examples of early Felix Fogarty. <laughs> of milk and a pound of butter. What happened about the lamps? I took them back. And the $50? Got every cent, even the sales tax. <gasps> I don't see how you did it. Oh, it was nothing. I had a man-to-man -man talk with Mr. Wharton. Got along famously. You see, when a man goes into a place like that... Hey, George, look! <laughs> <laughs> it came! <laughs> when the five huge men brought this thing in our rollers through the patio, said it was from the Thorndale auction, I said there must be some mistake. But it has your name on it. Liz, as you know, I would never think of buying anything from an auctioneer. But you got carried away. This was such a great deal, I just couldn't pass it up. Oh. I, uh, what are you looking for? The letter opener. Here. Oh. You know, uh, first, Wharton didn't even want to sell it. I had to talk him into it. Right, Fred? Right, George. I only hope he can straighten his arm out after the way you twisted it. <laughs> Seen anything like it? Not since Grant's tomb. <laughs> would you would you believe it, Liz? This is the only one of its type? Yes, yeah, I believe it. An original Felix Fogarty, created at a cost of over two thousand dollars. Guess what I got it for? Go on, guess. I'm afraid to. Ninety-five dollars. No. <laughs> yes, it was just dumb luck. Plus shrewd bargaining, of course. While we were there, Mr. Wharton suddenly realized it would have to be moved anyway. What with the building coming down at all, so yours truly jumped right in, drove a hard bargain, even got free delivery. Some bargain. <laughs> Some bargain. Liz, Liz, listen, if we ever get tired of this, believe me, we could sell it for ten times what I bought it for. Oh, well, George is lovely. But don't you think it's a little large for the room? She does have a point, George. It's for the front lawn. Oh, of course. The front lawn. <laughs> I don't know why they left it here in the first place. It... Well, come on, Fred. Let's 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 move it. <laughs> this isn't a horse, it's a mule. <laughs> Darling, are you sure they haven't another statue like this? Of course I'm sure. Why? <laughs> we could get a pair. Think what beautiful bookends they'd make. <laughs> Try it again, huh? Mara? Liz? George, I like your spirit, but you're going to have to figure out some way to get a tractor into your living room. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it. Hold it. Smyra, you're with us or against us? With my muscles, it makes no difference. This is my first physical exertion since I was birthed. Got an idea. Why don't you boys get a crowbar or a length of pipe, put it underneath, lift up on it, and skid it out? Hey, that's a good idea. Hey, I think I know where there's a length of pipe. You call me when you're ready. Has it moved? Not an inch. Good. Good. Think what the neighbors would think if they saw that monstrosity out front. Honey, don't worry about us. We'd move. <laughs> 
George is beginning to realize what a mistake it was buying that... that... Cement hangover? He possesses the ideal qualities of a perfect husband, including the courage not to admit he's wrong. Wonder how long it'll take him to admit it. About when the man on the statue climbs down and shoes the horse. Hey, Myra, we got the pipe. That's the idea. Now, simply lift up on it. Hey, we got it off the floor. All right, Professor, what do we do now? Search me. <laughs> What's that noise? Well, it's just roller skates. Oh. Hey, of course, that's it. Roller skates. That's what? Roller skates. George is going to skate around the block a few times, and when he gets up enough steam, we'll throw a rope over him and zoom, out goes the statue. <laughs> Hey, those are some skates. So? You care to run them? You kidding? You'd break your neck. <laughs> no, no, no. no. You, you see, it's a, it's a question of leverage. I want to put them under something and wheel it out. Fifty cents? Per skate? <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on in. Gee, look at that big tombstone. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what's your name? How much? Give me a sketch, will you? I'll get my scooter and I'll race you to the candy store. George, if you're thinking of leaving town, the train's faster. Ladies and gentlemen, the experiment that you're about to witness may well go down in history alongside those of other great men of science. Newton, Galileo, Da Vinci, Fromkus. Prom kiss? The first man to tie a square knot in the end of a salami. Oh. <laughs> oh. We're going to jack up both corners of the statue one at a time, shove a skate under, and with one side up on rollers, we ought to be able to push it out. The George Cooper law of applied weight. I remember studying it in high school. I'll get the eye down. You shove the skates under. Hey! Come on, a little higher. A little higher. <laughs> A little higher, higher, high. Uh, it's under. Ouch. Hurry up. Look at this. It. Uh, he broke my skate. Ah. All right, all right, son. Look, here's, here's another two dollars. Three. All right, take five. Oh, Lord! <laughs> well, Mastermind, what now? Darned if I know. There must be some way of getting this darn thing out of the living room. Well, cheer up, darling. Maybe it'll be easier to get out of the basement. auctioneer to take it back for a little less money. Of course, I guess we, I, I could call Mr. Wharton and get the name of a prospective client. Uh, uh, I hate to admit that we can't keep an original Felix Fogarty. Just tell him, when you got home, you noticed you had another one around. <laughs> Cooper? Yeah? I'm Mr. Crandall. Oh, yes, yes. Come right in. Mr. Warden, the auctioneer asked me to call you. I thought we might make a deal. Yes, we'll just uh, come this way. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Crandall, I'd like you to meet my wife, Liz. Uh, Mr. Crandall is interested in acquiring our original Felix Fogarty. Oh, hello. How do you do? <laughs> oh, solid stone. Huh? Oh, yes, yes. It's solid, all right. I sure don't make them like this anymore. Uh, 64 inches. Oh, that's, uh, 66, isn't it? Oh, so it is. <laughs> George. I didn't know they bought statues by the inch. Well, he 
he's probably measuring it to see if it'll fit through the door of a small museum. Oh. Uh, Mr. Crandall, I, I want you to notice the fine symmetry, the delicate detail, the smooth flowing lines. Mr. Cooper, my bid is $90. $90? $90? Oh. Come, come, Mr. Crandall, you can do better than that. Well, you drive a hard bargain. All right, 75. 75? You just said 90. One of us seems to be a little confused, sir. I'm putting in a bid as Thomas to charge you to cart this monstrosity away. <laughs> I'll have to use a large truck and at least five men. I have to haul it across the city to the city dump and break it up. See, there's a city ordinance against just dumping things as large. Yeah, but this, 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 this costs thousands. It's, it's an original Felix Fogarty. Oh, Mr. Cooper, these old statues are a drug on the market. You can't even give them away. There's no other way to get rid of it? Well, erosion. <laughs> the years. Here, I'll just leave you my card. You can call me if you decide to part with the heirloom. Good evening. Oh, Liz. How did a nice girl like you marry a harebrained like me? Don't blame yourself, darling. I'm the one who proposed. <laughs> Probably the Associated Press wanting to interview the Idiot of the Week. Good evening, Miss Cooper. Oh, hello, Mrs. Sloan. I just hate to bother you again. Seems like I come by once a week to collect for some cause or other. Well, they're all good causes. Come on in. I'm collecting for... Good gracious. What's that? It's mineral. You have 20 questions. <laughs> What a magnificent piece of art. Uh, well, what are you collecting for today, Mrs. Sloan? This time, Our Lady's Auxiliary is building a home for working girls. Oh, and how much are the neighbors giving? Well, the average amount is $5. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, Mrs. Sloan. Well, how Good are evening, you? Good evening, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. Mrs. Sloan, <clears throat> a home like that should be something more than just a home. It should be a place of beauty. George, you're not thinking of donating our original Felix Fogarty. I wouldn't allow it. Don't <laughs> worry, Mrs. Cooper. The home is to be quite modern. There'd be no place for such a statue. But next week, I'm going to collect for a bird's sanctuary. <laughs> if there's one thing Los Angeles needs, it's a bird sanctuary. It does? Oh, <laughs> yes, 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 indeed. Control yourself. You know, uh, when I was a small boy, I, I had a pet pigeon, and... Well, one day he flew away and he never came back again. <laughs> well, in his memory, I would like to make this substantial gift. How very nice. But what about Mrs. Cooper? Oh, I understand how George feels. We will donate our original Felix Fogarty. Well, if you put it that way, I can see it now. Nested with pigeons. <laughs> All we ask is that... Do you have it moved? There'll be a truck at the door in the morning. With five strong men. With five strong men. Naturally, we'll place a permanent plaque on the statue. Donated by Mr. and Mrs. Sidney Cooper. Oh, my mother calls me George. <laughs> <laughs> Donated by Mr. and Mrs. George Cooper. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. by Mr. and Mrs. George Cooper. Oh, the Cooper name is about to go down in posterity. And only for 95 bucks. Oh, you're a genius. <laughs> no, not so much of a genius. More of a fathead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the room's going to look kind of empty without that statue. Don't you think I could pick up a little something at the auction tomorrow? <laughs> Oh, I had the most awful nightmare. I dreamt that you and I were pigeons, and that awful statue was fighting us off. <laughs> Did you really dream that? Not exactly. But whenever I have nightmares, 
I like the way you calm my fears. <laughs> Ida Moore, Rex Evans, Roy Roberts, and Michael Winkleman. Fashions by Harry Cooper, Beverly Hills. Hats by Bill Strand. Speaking for Frigidaire, Irene Manning, and Walter Grisey. <laughs>